I like yeah, I like Jan in there with the uh, singing along with that uh, <laughs> intro there. So for the folks that are uh, singing along with us, we appreciate it. Hey, yeah. this is Grabbing the Brisket Podcast. We're on episode 190, and it's all about trimming and seasoning briskets. But that's the barbecue talk. We'll get to that in a little bit. Yes. Uh, how's everybody's week been? Pretty great. Busy. Busy. Yeah, very busy. Good. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> amazing. The most amazing week ever. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ever? Well, do you want to give I'm us specifics? Saying, or you just, no? No. Okay. I'm just saying cool. this just week, in general, right? Just in general, it was okay. generally the greatest okay, week yes, ever. I will give spe- <laughs> uh, specifics. Uh, specific one may have pre-gamed a little bit before I got here. No doubt. Specific two, uh, dude. We're at the end of the year. Am I right? Mm-hmm. It is this the end of the year. This yeah, is the that's time. Accurate. The, yes. This, this yeah. is the time of the year. Whether you have vacation or you don't, either way. If you have to go into work, there ain't nobody there. Uh, ain't nobody. Yes, there is. Yes, a lot. My work is always busy. Well, that's yeah. because y'all work in the hospitality. Hey, Jan, I feel you. I, You're even I, more I, busy. You know what I'm saying? It up. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Can, can we get Matt? Matt, you, you've got like almost like an echoey, like you're in a bathroom. Just don't say anything until that's fixed. Uh, James. No, I sound fine. How is your office right now at the end of the holiday? How many people are taking vacation? Matt. How many people are taking vacation right now at your, at your company? They're like, even though I work from home, don't expect me to do anything because I'm on vacation. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's like 90% of the office. Every, everybody? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody's off and it just every other day it's a new person. It's off. It, yeah. it, just, it is and, what and it is. You know yeah. what happens? It's, it's like, I, I feel like uh, if you have the vacation, right? Like, it's just your vacation time. It's mm-hmm. your whatever. And, and and then people take it off, right? And then for the person that doesn't have it off, the person that used his vacation is now being stuck with everybody else's bullshit for the next two weeks. Yeah. I think the w- one of the biggest thing is listening to the obviously the the big uh, cliche is very very wrong. I'm sorry, but it's fine. Don't worry about me. Why does it feel so wrong? No, no, no yeah. Let me let me back that thought up and yeah. start it over again. Uh. Uh, I cliche is the wrong word, but that that those office isms that people say mm-hmm. or whatever, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah. hey, I'll take care of that next year. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's yeah. next like a, year's problem. Sounds like a twenty twenty three problem. Next year, <laughs> catch you later. Right. You're uh, like, oh, okay, great. Never gets old. I'll see you in two days. Right. Okay, yeah. I put thank you. nails behind your car when you back up. Good luck with that. Right it, today, and it depends and. A lot of offices are, are different, and even just this this economy, the downturn uh, that we faced over the last couple of years. I'm in the oil and gas industry, so uh, it has gone down a little bit. And but so you're the, a volunteer the, and in the oil and gas correct. industry. Correct. The the suppliers uh, used to just like just unload just massive just like treats and cookies and platters and just everything, and you go up there and just like just. Basically, like a buffet, you're just like scoop, and it's like it, it's fine. I mean, it's the holidays. I can eat twenty cookies. It's no big deal. Right, you're right? supposed to. Yeah, and then you get vendors like, bro, here's a here's a whiskey gift set. You want that? Here you go. And then next thing you know, it's like uh, you like tequila, and so all this alcohol starts coming out, and the cookies and the. I can't believe you hadn't had breakfast tacos yet. Let's boom. So it's it's a great time uh, of the year, especially <laughs> if you're in in me and the purchasing side of it. Uh, oh, the sales get, guys get are, get are in full force, just trying to sit there and just like make you happy. So 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 yes. I hate you right now. So I get so, none of that. So just to be honest with you, uh, you're exactly right, James. Earlier this week, I was up at I don't know four forty five this morning. I already placed an order. At, at a well, I mean, give a little love. But it's Pena's mm-hmm. right there at uh, um, the Donut and Diner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. So they had to change the name, right? That's what it is. They had to change the name, and dude, I ordered like three hundred dollars worth of breakfast, delivered it out, and as soon as I dropped it off, and, and I, I actually had coffee on the way. It just hadn't got there yet. First thing, I mean, I just unloaded three hundred dollars worth of breakfast. Girl walks in. She's fumbling around. No coffee. I'm like, look, girl. Like, what are you? Hey, right. hey, 
Shut the f up! Right, it's take on your the ass way. down to the coffee bar it's that I know you got already. Up. Hey, listen, it, it, it's it's a listen. I'm taking my donuts and left. <laughs> and you <laughs> all know if, if you all people right now, James of all people should know that coffee's a big deal. It, it's a huge deal. Let's be honest. If your company doesn't have coffee, and like all of a sudden they they've had it every day except for that one time, and they say, you know what, we're going to discontinue coffee at this office. There's going to be a mutiny. Yeah, in, in my I, opinion, I'm just different. It's like I never expect it, I never request it, yeah. but I'm always appreciative of the the, the stuff that people bring. That's because uh, you're just not a. Do you take their creamer? I mean, right. Do you do you drink their creamer, James? No, that's a not a boss move. Yeah, um, yeah. I totally listen. I go into and I bring creamer, but I go in. I'm like, oh, damn, that looks good. Sorry, last drink. I'm gonna finish it off. But yeah, done. Well, let, let's get a little bit into, I don't know, like a little bit into the podcast. I, I know we're, we're going <laughs> to, I know we took the long way around, but like the, the train just like, now we're going to reel it back well, in I just think, a little bit. I like think we're already in the bit. podcast though. No, we are. We are. Yeah. Um, like when you and John, we're getting into the podcast. I'm like, I feel like we've already been in Definitely. the podcast. Yes, we are in the podcast. And we talked about the holidays here a little bit. I brought a surprise. A gift. John's got a surprise for us. Christmas presents. <gasps> From him. For all you suckers. Come Aww. on. Are you serious? Yeah. Hold on. Do, do I nip it on my tree and not open it's it? It's not even Christmas, Christmas time. It's, it's Christmas enough. Yeah, it's about to be boomers. Good catch, Alex. And this is uh, probably the coolest here. thing that you will own. Do we open it now? Yes, open it now. <gasps> Absolutely. Open it now. Now uh, I feel like a shit and, and not bring anything for anybody else. And just right. enjoy ASMR. it. Take it in. You're going to love it. It's going to be everybody's <laughs> shirt with their picture on it. I know exactly what it no, is. No, it's going to be everybody's shirt with a picture on it. So stupid. <laughs> wow. I hate what, you, John. That's what John does. Hey, to it's a grab the brisket it. shirt. <laughs> with... This is what John does right here. With an ugly mug. <laughs> so someone for, someone describe what... So yeah, for what people who are not watching the video right now, it's a grab the brisket shirt... With John's face on it, yeah, you can get yours right now. Grab the dot com. Can we get one with all of like each of our faces? Is all of our face an option? Yeah, you can. It is pay, actually. Hey, no, you hey. can when you pay the money. Uh, John, I mean, there this, were there were four better faces you could have put on the shirt, <laughs> John. <laughs> this hands down is the best gift, only because not only did you give a gift with your face on it, you made everybody. <laughs> Push it is, up. There you go. John's got it uh, at the same time. You know what I'm saying? John Absolutely. Has it oh, with John's all the on. characters on it. Yeah. yeah. So I got one too, but mine has everybody's. Oh. Well, just just in case, like you don't want to see what John looks like. Yeah. There's John. You're welcome. Thanks, yeah. Alex, for no. crumpling that up right Not bad, man. Yeah. Well, it was, Very it was <laughs> ramping ASMR. paper. ASMR. Shut up, Matthew. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. why everybody yeah. tunes in, lit, right? And I got you guys all different colors, so you wouldn't look ridiculous. You yeah. Know? And I, I like how you got <laughs> me purple. I appreciate that. You like purple, right? I do like yeah, purple. I, I purple. Love, no, I love purple. Exactly. I think I got everybody a good color that they would yeah. go with. And me and James do have the same color, but it's a little bit different. I think I'll use mine to like change the oil in my truck. And It's typically the way it is, John, right? You're a butthole. Well, can I say, John? Hey, thank you so much. Thanks, we buddy. appreciate it. Yeah. Very thoughtful. Merry Christmas. Man. Hey, Very seriously. thoughtful. Thank you. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah. What so, else did you get us? <laughs> what's next? Hey, next. I'm ready for. Uh, and then, are there any more presents? <laughs> right. So, okay, John, you you mentioned. Uh, John sent me a text message earlier. Uh, he's like, "Oh, I, okay. So I got something. I got a surprise, and I got social. He said something social." Like social? What are you talking about? Social? <laughs> you're like, you're talking like the outsiders, like the 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 socials and the greasers. Like, I, what are you talking about? You're like our social media, and I'm like, oh, okay. Yes, our brain did not connect those dots. Yes, and I know James kind of got a peek at this, but I don't know if the rest of you guys saw what I posted today on Twitter or Instagram. Mm-mm. Okay, so I've been seeing a lot of these things, uh, and they basically always say the same thing. Like, what's something that you can say? Uh, oh, I both this. in this and in this or you can't say in this but you can say in this whatever so i i made a barbecue uh version if you will what's well, something that you can say while while barbecuing but not while at a funeral yes sir. Uh, yeah i'll say it one more time she's done say it while you're barbecuing 
not at a funeral. <laughs> and we got probably more than 100 responses on this thing. <laughs> uh, and some of them are freaking hilarious. So yeah. I thought I would share some with you. Give it. Let's go. Let's see. So I'm just going to put them up on the screen here. <laughs> and like I said, there was a lot. I tried to narrow it down. I'm not going to read all of these. I'm going to put them as many as I have on the screen, but we'll read a few of them if you see one that catches your eye. Uh, say something. This first one here was from our buddy uh, Heath Riles. Oh, so <laughs> who's ready to eat? Oh, he. <laughs> who's ready to eat? Yeah. Say Jesus. it at a barbecue. Don't say it at a funeral. That's funny. Uh, here's another one for you. Looks a little dried out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I almost spit beer out of my nose on that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, some of these are. Some of them are really good. Some of them are kind of good, and some of them are downright inappropriate. So, um, so say it one more time, though. Is it for people that at a what? Something that you can say or you might say while you're barbecuing, but you should not, could not. Or ever say. At should a, not say at a funeral. At a, at at a funeral. funeral. Yeah, don't say right? it at a funeral. Yeah. At a barbecue, you might hear this. Yeah. Uh, so the next one, what's the internal temperature at? Mm, right. Oh, uh, what's that <laughs> one? About 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, give me another beer. Uh, let's see. That's some mighty or fine some looking hunk of meat. Some funerals that might might be appropriate. Sorry. Right, I think there's probably some funerals where like, there is l- beers listen, being passed around. Yeah. It, it, uh, forgive Matt's dog; he keeps <laughs> running around here and just <laughs> screw with mics right now. So it is what it is. He's our mascot. Let him be. Yeah, I just want <laughs> to throw sure. another one on I there. Just make sure oh people my god, know. that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of them. They're all hurry up before it gets cold. Uh, <laughs> doctor, go back to that one. Doctor, what? Doctor D's, Doctor D's, fifty one, brother. Yeah. You got a. This one's from our, our buddy Triple Six. Keep uh, it coming, OMG, man. that smells so fucking good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm, uh, let's see. There's, and I'm just gonna scroll through some of these. If you like one, tell us. Try and voodoo. slab a meat right there at Kitchen Voodoo. <laughs> this one is glazed, funny. Boo! <laughs> 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 that sucker's done. <laughs> 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 Say, there's some I smoked them. Yeah. yeah. All I know is some of these people are going to hell. Like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Close, close the lid and stop fiddling with it. <laughs> stop. Hey, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Yeah, right. I'm right? pretty sure it's that one was those, one of them. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, should we wrap in butcher paper or foil? <laughs> uh, this one we got probably ten times. Fat <laughs> side up or fat side down? Yeah, that's a good one. Swine Specter. This one made me think of Jan. Uh, should we flip it over? <laughs> oh, right. hey. wow! Hey, they're not oh. flapjacks. I mean, <laughs> right? You ain't need to flip them. Uh, what What'd you brine with? What'd you brine that with? Yeah, yeah. That's, that, there's the one Jan just said. If you're looking, yeah. you ain't cooking. Uh, that would make great burn ends. Oh, okay, God, well, <laughs> some of you guys are dark. Some of these people are rough. Shot. Yeah, yeah. I, it is what it is. Wow, yeah. it's got guys, a good cross. Obviously, <laughs> nobody knows who these names are <laughs> at, at work. Uh, but hey, uh, if you want to look any of these people up, they weren't bashful. These are, most of them are Twitter. There's quite a few that are on Instagram as well. Uh, stick a fork in it. No, it's badass, man. Mm-hmm. First of all, somebody's saying what they yes all day long. I could have said every one of these and then right. some. So yeah, one hundred percent. That meat's job. still good. <laughs> no, uh, that's, uh, that's probably that's uh, rough. probably uh, expired. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of uh, yeah. rough. I'm stuck. Uh, Damn, she's hot. Yeah, uh, I like to say, hey, uh, people that are following along here on the video or listening to the podcast, go slide over to Twitter and our social media feeds. This is still going to be up, so you can go and drop your own comment because yeah. I know there's probably a lot of people listening right now, just like just dropping, like, oh, oh say this or hey, yeah, it's still growing. Tell yeah, us, the list is us. growing. Just it's getting us. ridiculous. Uh, Damn, she's juicy. I think mm. the last couple here. Uh, yeah, let's get that pig in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one was nice butt. Nice butt. Nice wow. Butt. <laughs> nice. I don't know. It just cracked me up. But these are things you can't say at a funeral. Right. Don't say it at a funeral, but it's appropriate when you're barbecuing. That's right. Right. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'll slide into uh, kind of segue over to my night last night. I, I was over, and Jan hates this when I mentioned that Houston Livestock Show and Radio, my <laughs> volunteer. <laughs> volunteer. <laughs> Duties. It um, wouldn't matter, but the fact that you end it with "I'm a volunteer," I'm a volunteer, and then you started out usually yeah. with "I'm a volunteer." Those exactly. are the things I'm talking about. I have a pen. Just, if you just, if it's you like just, one of those. Like I, I go into those yeah. pens that says, Bro, "I'm a volunteer." If you just or live I voted, your life like without, I voted. Like who gives a shit? You voted. Yes, well, you did. Great. 
Why you got to wear a little ribbon? This is ribbon? how we feel with your little I volunteer. I I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. So I think it's great it. you volunteer. We got, it, we, we got invited uh, over to do a beer tasting for the, the barbecue yeah. um, portion of the uh, Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. So we got to sample all the beers that Miller Coors mm. offered. They're delicious. It, there are some are delicious. Some are kind of just straight up trash. I'm really? going to be honest. Yeah. Uh, Soul. I don't know if you guys are a fan of Soul. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, uh, that is the, the Mexican, Mexican lager. lager that they offer. So good. Had that. Straight garbage. Yeah, it's like, so good. It's because they serve no. it in a clear bottle. No, it's bad. That, that, it comes in What's, a can. Uh, oh, okay. So they used so to so, serve it in the uh, same bottle as the uh, Corona. Yes. Right? Yeah. 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 There, there was a there was a line in Kugel uh, in there that was yeah. it's not bad. I mean okay. it's it's okay. Uh, there is a there is a different Blue Moon. You get they they pulled out the regular Blue Moon and they they brought out a a different or a brand new Blue Moon. I can't remember what the name of it was. I actually kind of liked it. I was like, okay, this is this is actually pretty good. Um, again, it's a lot moon. of these people that are going to the rodeo are probably power drinkers, yeah. and they're probably <laughs> just going to stick with just the Ultra or the Bud Light or right. Coors or whatever. Uh, I did hear that they, they are going to offer Coors original oh, well, nice. the yellow jackets uh there uh, i think last year it was only available to the teams wasn't available to the public now they're going to offer it to the um the public as well so super mm-hmm. excited about that love that why yeah. why, why are, are you so excited about that because i like Coors original yeah <clears throat> it's good to drink yeah. no it is but it's it, good is, to it drink. That, is it that much different than the Coors light be honest yeah, a lot yes. more, a lot more flavor. See, that I'm was saying. probably this the first beer that I flavor. ever drank. So, because my dad used to drink them when I was so, a kid. I, I think it's important to talk about. It's like people associate Coors Original and Coors Light being the same beer. Mm-hmm. It is not the no. same beer. No, no. Not. it actually has a good flavor. Uh, they both do. One is way watered down. Mm-hmm. Coors Original is. It may be one of the best. I, I almost yeah. equate this to a light beer, but it may be one of the best light beers or best full body beers out right. there. I'm, I'm just saying. Well, they, they told us uh, so th- this Coors Original is uh, brewed in, and I think it's, is it Gold? Um, you might be lying to somebody. You might look it up or fact check it. Yeah. It's like um, Golden, uh, Golden Colorado. Sounds or familiar. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, Coors Original is only brewed there mm. at that brewery. Now they brew a lot of Coors Light and other beers all across the country. Yeah, it's a cheap but beer. Coors Original is only brewed at this specific brewery and it's been made there for the last like hundred forever something years. So makes it, you want to go get one right off using that, that water. Like, I, I really yeah. want one right now. Yeah, now yeah. I want to go there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's Road do trip. a trip. Podcast we'll on location at the Coors Brewery. I'll yeah. see what Let's I can do. do. <laughs> hey, listen, as much Coors or Coors Light that we actually drink on this podcast, Coors should actually be the official sponsor. Yeah, we're keeping that I'm in business. Just sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is that is that crazy to me? Or like yeah. Denver Martin, Think about Denver Martin many, House. Right. right. Well, no, Martin House is the official beer review. Beer, yeah, one hundred percent official. Yeah. yeah, the unofficial, unofficial official. the yeah. unofficial. Yeah, one hundred percent. So we got uh, it, it. was a fun experience. Got to taste a bunch of beers. Um, definitely does not make for a great next day when you sample probably like eight to ten different <laughs> s- beers and styles of beers or whatever. Um, next day I didn't feel terrible, but um, next day after that you went to go all that sample. great. Eight or ten different stalls. Right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Kind of like after last weekend, or the podcast. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Our Christmas <clears throat> beer episode. They rolled out uh, <laughs> two revolvers. Uh, they had the blood orange, and oh, there, was a, great. there was yeah. a new one, like some blood orange or blood orange honey type deal. Blood and honey. The blood and honey sucked. Really? Yeah. I, well, I didn't care for it. Blood, like blood orange blood was good. but I like the blood orange and the blood and honey. Yeah, I do yeah. too. Well, yeah. Can um, and we got uh, no. Nope. We got awesome swag bags from them. It's a little cooler, a little Coors Light little, cooler. Little cooler. Yeah. Then it came with a yeah. uh, a sweater. Cheers. I mean, it's not a yeti, frisbee. But... Bunch of other swags type stuff. So he, he it was pretty bad. Had a fun time. Huh. He did get a frisbee too. Well, I said a yeti. Oh, I thought you said a frisbee. No, I said it's not a yeti. No, it's not a yeti. It's no, right. no, it's not. Not a yeti. That's it's accurate. <laughs> wow, what an asshole. <laughs> and this will be a perfect segue if maybe we slid into the 
Barbecue news. Hot off the grill barbecue news brought to you by the Barbecue News Magazine and the MBBQA. A couple of things. The first one, uh, and this is kind of close to our hearts, I would say. Hmm. The Barbecue News Magazine just did, I didn't even know they were going to do this. They just did a, uh, a review on our, I say our, the Chicks That Smoke Barbecue Rub. It's nice. like a half page nice. spread it's in the ours? magazine. Listen, yeah. hey, we're like, pushing it. We support y'all. Let's yeah, go. One hundred percent. So, anyways, they did a review. They loved it. Uh, if you guys have not checked that out, definitely check out Barbecue News Magazine. And if you haven't tried Chicks at Smoke, obviously try Chicks at Smoke. The other thing is, and I don't know if this is news or not. I just thought it was interesting. It popped up on one of my pages. Disney World is getting a barbecue joint. Uh, Roundup Rodeo Barbecue Spring Twenty Twenty Three uh, coming to Toy Story Land. And it looks like from the theme of it that you, this restaurant, you are like the size of a toy. I don't know if that makes sense. Everything around you is blown up, so it feels like you're the size of a toy. Oh, I get that. You see what I'm saying? Is that the one in Orlando or? I'm thinking it's Disney World, so I'm assuming it's the one in Orlando. Okay, yeah. I'll be Uh, there in March. Okay, so hopefully it'll be open. It says spring of 2023. Uh, Andy created a rollicking place for honorary toys to enjoy barbecue-inspired comfort foods. Served family style with platters of house smoked meats, a roundup of sides, and some miniature sweet surprises along the way. So it said house smoked, so maybe it'll be, I don't know if it, it, it ain't going to be like the best barbecue ever, but Disney doesn't do anything really half ass, I don't right. think, either. Nah. I wonder what style it's going to be. Mm. Like, what kind of barbecue is that? Oh. You know? Well, it's not if Texas. It's there when it's I go, Texas, hey, uh, I'll it stop by and, and I bet you it's real vinegary. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. If hey, Alex goes down there and he and is there, he'll give us a, a review for sure. Sauce. A lot if of it's sauce. there, like first week in March, we're going. Okay, yeah, I'll well, let you know. I just thought it was cool, interesting, whatever. Mickey Mouse down there smoking shit. So. <laughs> I'll wear Mickey Mouse. I'll, wear, yeah. I'll wear my shirt to review it that you just gave me. You should, hundred <laughs> okay. percent. Anyways, that's all I got for the hot off the grill barbecue news. And that slides right into the barbecue portion of this podcast. Barbecue uh, but James, portion. Listen, yeah. I want you to really go into this with like a lot of enthusiasm. Yes, you know what I mean. No, I think this is don't a, don't this be, is a portion don't of the podcast be where we slow it down. Just get no, James. No, <laughs> maybe you're Fucking cruising ramp along it in your car. No, I James. like I like this. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Go. Hey, hey, Jan, keep it down over there. I want right. I want to hear the slow part. Yeah. Right. Maybe you're just cruising along in your car right now, just like thinking about. <laughs> How shitty your job is. Yeah. Just let's talk a little bit about brisket. Now I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> hey, so uh, we're we're continuing on with the the brisket series that we're we're doing, and I know we brought this up before, but uh, we're hey, people still have questions, so uh, yep. we're going to throw a little bit of information out there to you. And uh, I, honestly, it's like if you have more questions or you have anything else, uh, write us, email us, yeah, text us, call us. We got the hotline. Yes, I mean, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, um, t- trimming, trimming the brisket. It, it almost seems kind of like trivial because I mean we, we've all done it before. Like I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of times. So it's like it's firsthand. First, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's it's easy for us to just go in there. Oh, we need to take this off. We need to do this right here. So, a couple of pointers, a couple of little little uh, things that I wrote down, and and I got this from. Uh, shout out to the uh, the the smoking barbecue source. Uh, so the pictures here in this little, uh, pamphlet that I have for you guys, uh, some of the pictures, that's where I got it from. And so, some of them, I, that's where I got the idea from. But first and foremost, like when you're trimming your brisket, you want to start cold. You, you definitely want to pop that brisket into the that's freezer right. yeah. for a good, maybe I say maybe 30 minutes, 30, 45 minutes, minutes, 30, yeah. 45 minutes to let that outside kind of harden up. Because uh, it's so much easier trying to trim this so brisket much. when it's a little bit frozen. Oh, that, mm-hmm. that congealed fat, that congealed <laughs> fat is one of the worst things to try to peel off a, a piece of meat. You're just like it's. First of all, it's slimy, and you're like you're you're pulling on it, trying to rip it with a knife. You're yeah. like, this is not working. This is a good way to hurt yourself. Really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And, and I wrote down it's like it was like a. The the warm soft fat almost has like a jelly or a jello yeah. mm-hmm. texture to it when it's so warm. It's very hard. You can have the sharpest knife in the world, but you're sitting there trying to like saw with you're it. Sawing, no, yeah, yeah. it's Getting not cold, good for sure. Uh, so you pull it out of the freezer. The first thing you want to go for is that soft kind of pillowy fat. That's when you want to knock out first because the thick hard stuff. 
that's going to stay kind of rigid and hard for a while. Right. So knock off that, that stuff that's going to be kind of like we're talking about jello first mm-hmm. and then go into the uh, hard fats. Okay. That's usually yeah. on the uh, underside you're talking Usually about. on the bottom side, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it, it, at the end of the day, you're just trying to peel this m- damn fat off and like Correct. before it starts to warm up, right? Right, right. Correct. That's the goal. So, so, I mean, yeah. Start with the soft stuff. I mean, you probably have 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes. Once it's in the freezer, mm-hmm. and, and that's it. And then at that point, you're like, oh, I'm, now I'm trimming. Right. Yeah, and I think I, we didn't mention, but I think you probably you need to definitely sh- start off with like very sharp utensils. But you want to mm-hmm. start off with maybe some type of uh, fillet knife, and then maybe I mean a butcher knife will do as well. Something very sharp, and then if you can get a slicing knife, yeah, slicing knife, those two things can really elevate your trimming games. Um, simply having the long blade of a slicing knife. To, to stay parallel and you can sit there you and really start shape that thing, right? Shape and start trim the top as opposed to putting like gouges into the meat. Yeah. That's what you want to yes, avoid. I've definitely done that. It looks like a bunch of freaking puddles when you're cooking it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've never done that. There's Guys, I've, I've never, never done, done that. You're a liar. I don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I do. Basically same thing. I'll do that. I'll, I'll get some of that soft fat. And then usually the next thing I'm doing is I'm starting to shape the sides, right? Where that, where it was cut off the beef and it's got that hard brown, whatever the hell it is. I'll start trimming the sides down. Is that basically where you're going next? Or? Aged, yeah, correct. Yeah, that age. Well, that that okay. So that 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 brown that texture, brown that fat. hearts or whatever, that comes in when they slice this cow right. in half. Like uh, that, that's basically not burnt, but you got a hot ass saw that's just like cutting through all these like. Right. Um, so it kind of maybe it's cooks almost, it a little bit. Cooked a little bit. Right it there, almost right? cooks a little bit or whatever, but then it gets cooled off or whatever. But yeah, you, you get rid of that stuff. I mean, yeah. you don't want to eat that. Hmm. So you get, I mean, I guess we always start with the fat cap first, right? Or do you start with the actual top portion? It depends on how you want to label this. I always say top portion is like the one that doesn't have any of the fat on top. Right. And the bottom is always like the fat cap, even though a lot of people cook fat side up. So starting with the fat side usually, right? Correct. Yeah. No. Either or. I mean. Yeah. For seasoning or for like. For trimming. For just trimming. trimming. Oh, no. no, honestly, I, so the bag is like, start with the top first, in my opinion, because you're able to square it off. So if you tr- if you flip it over and try to trim that one and try to square it off uh, on the sides, you don't see it as well. It takes you longer to actually see how far that fat really rolls over and whatever else, versus if you trim it that way when it's fat side down uh, and you trim it up, you're able to see the sides very very clearly and and yeah. knock off what you want or yeah. or, or square it that. off you know, you know what i mean i can yeah. see that yeah uh, but also you're working against the clock so i was like you okay are. tackle the, the 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 fat cap first yeah to where you get that nice and trimmed down to the the and it's almost like sounds kind of cliche whatever everybody says oh you want a quarter inch fat layer yeah, what does it matter that right matter. like what does it matter i mean you don't want a, an inch thick <laughs> right fat right. layer there but, because i mean yeah it it will render but you're not going to it's not going to render enough you're not going to eat it, eat it. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. going to be sliced off and your seasoning is going to go with it as well yeah um but yeah roll thumb quarter inch whatever yeah. then roll tide yeah, you, <laughs> I thought you're almost say roll tide <laughs> roll tide <laughs> i was like damn uh flip it over you want to remove any silver skin that you see i mean yeah. and that's where the uh the the full, the fillet knife and maybe mm-hmm. the uh, the slicing knife comes in. Uh, fillet knife you can kind of just like poke that sharp sharp blade up underneath that silver skin and then make your little cuts and and but the fillet knife I mean you can sit there and just like you got their brisket here you just pretty much plane the thing yeah yeah just make small little cuts all across and just like done looks yeah. looks beautiful. Yeah, that was I mean, a good trick to learn. Like, I didn't do that for the longest time, but maybe in the last year or so, I saw you do that, and I was like, oh, yeah. shit, that's a game changer. Oh, the yeah. silver skin? No, using the uh, using the um, the slicing knife. Oh, uh, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. And yeah. obviously, if you're... Uh, you're shaving if, it. If you're doing this at home in the backyard, I mean, the silver skin, you want to get as much as you can, but it's not going to fucking kill you if you that's leave right. a little bit on there. Correct. Right? Yeah. And, and I, I know we talked about picking out briskets before. Uh, you, you're always looking at the, the flat portion of it. 
you don't want to get anything that has uh you want to try to look for something that's like very even across right. the whole flat portion of thick as possible getting into the un un uh, unboxing uh opening up the brisket uh, sometimes the butchers kind of roll that under so you really can't tell the next thing you have this like little tapered right. off wing right i hate when they do that, that, well, that yeah, comes out yeah, to the but, side yeah but you think you when you're looking at it you think you had this thick like right the, the small like the tapered side which is normally tapered you're looking at it and go oh my god i had this 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 brisket is the same thickness from one side to the other side correct and then you pull it out of the package, and it's like, <laughs> never mind. This thing just unfolded in front of me. It's the most right. paper thin edge I've ever had in my life. Now I got to right. cut back like, like pounds. I, I, I'm not going to joke to you. Pounds of meat you'll cut back, and obviously you'll use those to grind or do something with. But you lose a lot by by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. Yeah, and yeah. like you're saying. Uh, I mean, you got to trim it back because I mean, in the cooking process, when you're when you're you basically want to shape this thing to a nice, not oval, but you want to round the edges. You want to make everything kind of just like uniform and even. You don't want the say the point to be super high up to where the flat just comes this way, and all of a sudden the point comes Mm -hmm. up like this because. When you're cooking at that point area on the very top, that's what's going to cook first. Right. And your your tapered off pieces, that's what's going to cook first. And those yeah. things are going to be like pretty much jerky or little dry bits. <laughs> I will tell you uh, this: as you cook, the, the OG move right now, the, the OG move is to turn your brisket over, right, and, and then you have your fat cat up, your fat cap up. Fat cat? Yeah. Well, that's what alcohol does. Get to a your fat brain. kitty. Makes you, uh, yeah, slur. Anyways, uh, you put it up. But at that point, where that thickness is of your of your uh, of your flat, right? Of the the actual flat of that brisket, you just trim mm. it the same size. So obviously, you're, you're you're going to remove some meat that you didn't mean to or you didn't really want to. However, the brisket will be the same thickness. It will cook the same. Versus having some huge thick piece right. on right on 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 the point or uniform so, cooking. So honestly, yes, flip it over, fat side up, find what what the flat's looking like, how the thick of it, and obviously you have to maybe scale up a little bit, but just whack the fucking thing off and turn that damn thing into something different. But don't don't play around with it and act like oh man, I I didn't, I didn't get that one brisket the same cut or I didn't do this. No. Form that brisket you have into the cut you want, and, yeah. and 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 people are so worried about really trying to like over screw it up and cut yeah. too much off. Well, I think, and, and I don't think they cut enough off. I think you have a lot of people that just I, I spend sixty eight dollars yeah. on this brisket or seventy eight. I don't want to cut thirty dollars off. One hundred and twenty bucks. Yeah. and just like put it in a bag yeah. and just but okay. Yeah, it is I'll, what it is. I'll cook whatever later a lot You're of people right. are just like i'm just gonna cook it as is and it comes out as is and we'll just eat the crispy and burn right, parts right. Well, listen man You're, i understand it you're right however those people aren't winning if we're talking competition yeah it's totally different you definitely want to go try to get it as uniform as possible yes. backyard barbecue i'm definitely trimming off the thin spots because like you said it's just gonna dry out the thick spots no, I, i'm not as worried about yeah, it i i i just don't play devil's advocate on this no, no, I get so, it. So obviously uh, on, on a backyard trim 100 percent, right yeah. it doesn't really matter i'm just saying for the comp side flip it over whack off the parts that are like not equal to whatever and then yeah grind it up do whatever you want to do but dude i'm mm-hmm. done right now it's and on competition get rid of the point yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. some guys do. Yeah, yeah. It, well, I mean, you get into competition. I mean, they, they they'll take these briskets that are like 10, both. 12, 15 pounds, and they'll take it down to where it's like this big. Yeah, it's like eight pounds or eight something. Pounds. Yeah, a lot of guys yeah, are they'll cook it, down it to where like, it's like several hours. Tiny. And, yeah, yep. yeah. Uh, but for just back home, but backyard, just cooking, doing brisket yourself, uh, try to want to make this brisket as as uniform as possible. You don't want to remove a ton of meat. That that's fine, right? It is, but just know going into it that you're going to have some pieces that are going to be maybe a little bit tougher than others. Uh, it is what it is. Um, 
and you'll live with it and go on the road. This is how we kind of learn because you're just like, well, I'm going to eat this brisket. So even right. if it is kind of tough or whatever, yeah. kind of tastes like jerky, but uh, hey, I like jerky. So <laughs> well, I think well, so, everybody else does. Yeah. So we actually learned before people had thermometers. Correct. And, and like we had some like old 70 year old guy going, no, nah, just put your finger in it and it'll tell you how done it is. Right. Dude, I'm like, you're this guy was so wrong. Looking back on it, I'm like, how many, how much misinformation you actually got at a cookoff is crazy. Yeah. It, there were so many different things. Like, like, what are the wildest things you ever heard? Uh, yeah, yeah I don't know. I, I, can't think, <laughs> I can't think right off the bat. Wildest things that I've heard at a, at a cookoff. Like, you have to do with your brisket. You have to do this, or you're not going to be successful. Well, I mean, like you got to keep flipping your brisket. You got to yeah, keep yeah, that's doing right whatever. There. Right, right. You, but yeah, you, you have to flip your brisket. You're like, mm, right. Not really. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. And we're moving on. Jan, Jan, had, I, don't, I don't know if Jan's it. read the syllabus, like the the actual well, I, cooking of brisket. I that's that's coming up in the next couple episodes. <laughs> we're still sticking on trimming. I'm busting your balls a little bit, Jan. You are. I am. It's fine. Uh, John, did you ever, did you steal some of these photos, or you can throw them up? Whatever. Nope. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show <laughs> uh, the listeners. So that's one trim brisket right there. So that is last. Good how it's nice, 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 even trimmed, or whatever. Uh, we didn't mention so in between the the point and the flat, yeah. uh, you have that that vein of fat that runs in mm. between of them, and a lot of briskets vary, but you always have that deep pocket of fat. It's like, do I go in and cut it all out, or do I just cut in a little bit and remove some of it and just let it go? Because twofold, if you go in there and cut it all out, you're gonna either a you're almost splitting the two muscles. Or B, you're just creating this giant pocket that uh, that it just you put right. some seasoning in there well. and it, it collects with juices there. <laughs> That's and it's the flavor like, pocket, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> hey. uh, we we like to go in there and uh, if you can shape it to where it's kind of aerodynamic and just leave it as is. If you want to remove a little bit of that fat in that pocket, you could do that as well. If there is too much in there, and I'm saying a lot there, that will slow the cooking process of your brisket. Mm -hmm. Uh, so as that fat tries to render, it's going to, it's going to release moisture, which in turn is going to slow down the cooking of your brisket. So if you can go and remove a little bit of it, great. Uh, if not, it's not really a a deal killer for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Especially in backyard. Yeah. Most important things you you just want to cook this brisket as evenly as possible, and so if you can make it look even, and if you can round the edges, and maybe a lot of people, right? a lot of people go in there uh, in mm-hmm. the uh, the comp trail, and they'll take um, freaking scissors, and they'll take scissors and just basically on the edges of brisket, just cut all the way around. But do you round think it off. matters? Be honest. Do you think it actually matters? It does. Yeah, it keeps the brisket from fraying off. Uh, when only you're when you're slicing when you're on slicing. the edges. On the edges, when you're slicing briskets. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. Yeah, instead of just a square cut, no, I, I get it. I, yeah. I'm just saying I don't know. I I, I don't think it's. <laughs> I don't agree or disagree. Right. I love that. Hey, Jan, can you, I, can you get closer? Know, can you get closer? Hey, pull to your camera? mic away from your camera. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. I like Every one of you. I do not agree or disagree. Yeah. Jan's I a don't. politician. He's like, I what did I do, Jan? Cannot agree or well, Alex, agree. you've been the only decent yeah. person here. He's over here. F you, F you, F you. Right. You're cool. F so, you. Right. <laughs> I haven't done anything to you. Yeah. Can we can we move on from yeah, this? We're, we're moving horrible on. Horrible subject. Let's we're, talk about seasoning. We're talking about God. seasonings. Let's seasoning. Seasonings. Brisket. Uh, we can get into that. Yeah, dude. Salt, pepper. That's all you need, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Done. Salt, pepper. Done. West Texas. Episode <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah. But seriously, like uh, being in Texas, Central Texas area, salt and pepper is king. Like people, and, and a lot of people are like, uh, you need more flavor than that. Like I can't believe no. But then you go try some of these like really good barbecue restaurants or really whatever, like. Wow, this is pretty amazing. Like it's 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 really good. Now, is it better than like having no 
a little bit more flavor and a little bit of whatever. And I, I think that's one of those those caveats that people try to play with a little bit because, yes, salt and pepper does appeal to everybody. But then when you throw, start throwing down those um, those different spices mm-hmm. and those different uh, um, flavor profiles that people were like, some would be like, dude, this is money. And some would be like, oh, I don't know if I like that or not. That's, you know what I mean? Right, right. Nah, for me, I'm I'm all about layering those flavors. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, right. I get it. Yeah, right. and one of, one of the things I kind of learned, and so before we step over salt and pepper, the the key is getting the salt and the pepper to be kind of uniform in size. And in order to get that, you need to get kosher salt mm-hmm. and a 16 mesh black pepper. You want it coarse. You want it coarse, and that coarseness is really going to give you that that bark that that's going to pop a little bit. Uh, other other rubs that you use, the seasonings that we've used in the past, it has a little bit of finer um, finish to it. It it develops a bark, but it just like it just it's very smooth. Right, it is exactly. I was thinking the same thing. I was you don't get that like kind of like the bumps and whatever. So, uh, how would you suggest layering that if you have a finer seasoning? Do you go with a thick first, or do you go with a thinner? Yeah, I think you go thin first, That's and then, then you go thicker on top. Uh, I read an article today. I was jumping back around to um, it's amazingribs.com and, and some other articles that are, I was uh, um, reading. And one of the things they were talking about is um, spices and seasonings that are that are water, water soluble versus non water soluble. Uh, salt is primarily the only seasoning. That is water soluble. So as the meat cooks, sweats, pulls down the moisture, mm. the salt is able to pull into the meat. That's where you get a uh, uh, part of the smoke ring, that combination. That's why you see that chemical reaction between the 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 salt, the mm. smoke, uh, and all that stuff like that. But the other seasonings that you use that you can add the garlic powders the onion powders all that stuff like that that's not really water soluble. Those things aren't going to dissolve right they're just going to stay there so it, we'll, we'll talk a little bit later on when we start getting into bark development and that type of stuff but keep in mind those seasonings that you're layering on top of each other if you use too much of it and you don't let that set up then you're going to have this like mushy bark yeah, that's, yeah. And we've all done it. I've, I've done, done it. it for sure and i'm not saying it doesn't taste great i mean it, it tastes phenomenal but you can run your finger across it and it's like you just see like just all this like <laughs> seasoning. So right. uh, it, it's everybody has their own preference. Everybody really does have their own type of seasonings they use. Um, whether it's the, um, I think we we have our own personal favorites. I mean, the holy cow with uh, meat church the it, it, uh, is pretty badass. Mm-hmm. The the lanes brisket rub is pretty badass. The the Bonner's Fiesta, Fiesta. rub yeah. is just. I mean, Amazing. that thing is killer. Classic. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, do we have any like, cure for hiccups? Because right now, man, I have I been hiccuping. <laughs> I am so just like. Jan, the, Jan yeah, is. Uh, sugar on a is, tablespoon. Yep. Yeah. Can I say that uh, Jan that. has seasoned himself a little too much? Yeah. <laughs> so I started off with like. Started off with like. Um, like 30 minutes of like. The other type of seasoning. Beer? Right? Yeah. Beer. And then now I'm I'm on the yeah I'm on the other side of this. Okay, so I'll, <laughs> I'll okay. kick it out there to all the listeners out there. If you have your favorite brisket rub that you like, hey, please drop us a uh, text message, or better yet, send us a voicemail. Hmm. I mean, call us up at the four three four eight two nine two two nine nine. Leave us a voicemail talking about your favorite rub. If you want to drop a barbecue win or fail, just, hey, do that. You can win yourself a bottle of um, Suckle Busters. Mm. Suckle Busters, Suckle Busters. Suckle Busters. Everybody wants some Suckle Busters. Right? That's what I'm talking about. I didn't think we were doing that. Yeah. We just did. We just did. And I think this probably perfect segue into the grabbing on the brisket 
Paying the bills. Paying the bills. <laughs> yes. Let's. Uh, you, let's you gotta. You gotta. You gotta jump in there, John. You gotta save trying. me from that. I was trying. But That's what I was just. I doing. saw you thumbing through papers over there. I'm like, yeah. I, what are you doing? Like a book report? Like what are we doing? <laughs> let's no, go. Let's uh, let's pay some bills. Let's hear from somebody in the uh, Pods Media Network. One of our friends over there, and we'll be right back with what the thing you were gonna say. Okay. Part by Oklahoma Joe's new Rider Deluxe Pellet Grills. Since the company's humble beginnings in 1987, Oklahoma Joe has helped those who appreciate the process and the craft of smoking. What began with Joe Davidson, a member of the Barbecue Hall of Fame, and a dozen hand-built smokers at the Oklahoma State Fair over 30 years ago, has since forged an Oklahoma Joe's brand that builds some of the most sought-after smokers. Oklahoma Joe has a proud history of creating uncompromising smokers and grills with carefully crafted design. And the newest generation of the popular Ryder Series pellet grills carries on this tradition. The new features in the Oklahoma Joe's Ryder Deluxe pellet grills include a pit control 2.0 system that delivers the category's first dual sensor temperature control. Fire focused dual sensor feedback optimizes temperature control based on selected cooking styles, low and slow smoking, or high heat grilling. A power feed system that boasts the high torque auger motor that powers through pellets for incredible power and performance. The new Rider Deluxe series builds on several popular features, including smoke and sear modes, which features an impressive temperature range that runs from 200 degrees Fahrenheit to a searing hot 650 degrees Fahrenheit, and a 20 pound quick draw hopper that allows unused pellets to be drained in seconds for simple storage, removal, and swapping of pellet flavors. Guys, if you want to find out more information about the new Rider Deluxe Series pellet grills from Oklahoma Joe, check out the Oklahoma Joe's website, and the link is in our description in the bio, and that's oklahomajoes.com. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm Richie. I'm Little Matt. And here in the 500 Section Lounge, we are three dads who host a family-friendly weekly podcast. Yep, we laugh, we go on tangents, we talk to great guests. Tangents? I, I don't know what you're talking about with that. You know, there are gases leaking. Uh, all right. All right. Okay. Yeah. We have legendary conversations from sports to history and everything in between. So be on the lookout for what we do next. And always be there to grab, grab a listen. listen. Can we get into a little bit of the barbecue fails? Uh, and this week we don't have a submission and it's not every week that I have a kind of a fuck up, but <laughs> I, I had a screw up this past weekend and everybody goes through it every once in a while. And it, I would say probably 99% of a lot of just fails in barbecue is probably due to distractions. Yeah, I, that's I, true. I, would, I think every time somebody, agree. somebody sends <laughs> yeah. in a, a fail about burning Alcohol, up a Traeger or yeah. something. Yeah. 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 And you're, so, always, you're always distracted by something shitty, right? Like yes. something just crappy. Nope. Hey, you I watched, was talking about. Gosh damn so, <laughs> fuck it. was you, like uh, Mike Tyson always says, like you always have a plan until you get punched in the mouth. Right, that's right, and that's basically what I had was a plan of cooking these baby back ribs until I got punched in the mouth, and that punch in the mouth was me watching the Dallas Cowboys and the Houston Texans like slug festing it Dude. out, and uh, so Actually, almost the worst game, yeah, almost the worst game to watch. It was so horrible. You're like any minute now, this is gonna be not real, and it, it was just real. I know I got up like super early, like I got up at to like, watch that game. Yes. Dude, our neighbors had the whole I got up at like bus. 6 o'clock in the morning to get Same ready thing. to watch this game. All right, we're yeah. we're going to get into the, the, the Cowboy-Texas games. We're, we're going to talk about this this rib failure. Okay, let's hear about that. So I, I went into it, woke up early. I was like, yes, I'm going to throw the ribs on the Traeger. Just let it go. We're just going to be a nice little snack during the game. And then uh, I probably cooked about, uh, I think I did about uh, two hours. I had that thing rocking and rolling about 2.50 ish and i was like okay looking good uh then i was like we're cooking tri-tip as well so i was like i was getting that prepped me and alex over here we we're doing our thing we're trying to get everything set up and we're cooking that and i was like uh I was like, oh crap the uh ribs let me go out there and i got the ribs and i was like wrapped them up with like the butter uh brown sugar type deal threw it back onto the uh smoker went back outside and went you know our, our man cave is in the front aka vegas it's in the front garage so we're watching the game we're just getting super pissed off and excited and pissed off again and you're like <laughs> what the hell's going on and I, I don't know what point in the game or the moment it's like oh shit i got ribs cooking 
and I roll back out there and I got a video and I'll, I'll post it on the social media site yeah, so you can 100%. sit there and see it. Um, <clears throat> there was like an epiphany moment. I don't think there was any moisture left in this red. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't that bad. Like the it, center, the hey. cen- like in the very center, those ribs were okay. There was it, one good one in the, the middle. No, nah, <laughs> there was like four or five that were like, but they nah, were good. If they weren't that fatty, they, they went so hot that the moisture boiled out of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is 100%. Plus, plus it, almost to, if you've ever degrees. seen um, the Three Amigos, when yeah. Thank you, when, when the, the guy goes to uh, turn over his cantina and just sand falls out, that's pretty much the... Uh, they were the, not that bad. Not even The close. thin side, yes. Yeah. On the very, uh, what is it, like the loin side, like where you have the very end, dirty. where it's like pretty thick. Yeah. That was that was good. That was edible. But it literally is like it. It was like beef jerky. If you can make beef jerky out of like ribs, <laughs> well, it's like, also you had them. You had those had. cooking in the backyard cooker, and then we were cooking tri tip in the front, and the tri tip right. came out amazing. Oh yeah, tri tip's money. The tri tip. Hey, what was else we cooked? Great. We cooked something else too, though, didn't we? No, I think we did tri tip and. And ribs. We were going to cook some chicken and some other stuff and burgers. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Never we happened. just never did to. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a fail on my part. It's I got distracted, and I just let it go a little too long. I think I kind of like almost like I'm going to cook these just like I do my St. Louis-style ribs. And you can't do baby backs the same way yeah, because no. they cook so quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and hey, it's a fail on me. Um, yeah. But, but hey, honestly, I think I'll just go with that um, bottle of Chicks of Smoke rubs. So, so if you, oh, uh, you think we're going to get you some, okay. some rubs sent to you? Well, I suckle won, busters, didn't I? Suckle Busters. There's the jingle. Everybody wants some Suckle Busters. There's the jingle. That's fantastic. There it is. Yeah. But if you do actually want to send in a barbecue fail or a barbecue in, and when we say barbecue in, we don't mean like it doesn't have to be you won something at a competition. It can be like just, you, you nailed did, your first yeah. brisket or... You're or, cooking for your neighbors, and it yeah, came out great. Everybody you know, loved what you like cooked. We just yeah. love it. Hey, and your wife says, hey, man, your brisket no. came out better than a neighbor's Don't Rick's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Done. That's a barbecue win. So share your barbecue wins. Share your barbecue fails. Go to uh, grabinthebrisket.com or grabthebrisket.com. You go to the little connect with us. You find our email. You can leave your little winner fail there, and yeah. we will send you some suckle busters. That's right. Yeah, there it is. You can also leave it on our voicemail hotline. That's 434-829-2299. You could be a winner. You could be a winner. Just you are a winner. Share or or a freaking like share a story, right? Is that right? You share a story or what's the other one? Or don't. <laughs> Is that the only way to get get sucker busters? Yeah, you share. Share a win, share a fail, win or fail. share. So yeah. do you have to call the number? You don't no. have to. You could also send us an email. Okay, what's the number again? The phone number is four three four eight two nine two two nine nine. The email is info at grab them in the brisket dot com, or there's a little spot on our website grab the brisket dot com where you can just punch it in right there and it'll go right to our email. Yeah. Thank God there somebody is. said that out loud. Thank you, brother. Love it. Hey, honestly, as always, every week I have enjoyed talking barbecue with you. Peace. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We've been great. Later. Smoke on.